In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Uh, as you know, we are actually, believe it or not, at the fifth Sunday of the Great Fast. Um, and what is the reading of this fifth Sunday? The paralytic, the man who's been paralyzed for 38 years. Um, there's an asterisk that uh, another Abuna taught us one day a long time ago about knowing which you know, readings or the different Sundays of the Great Fast. It's T-T-S-S-P-B-P, -P, which is the treasures, temptations, the, the son, the prodigal son, and then the Samaritan. P-B, like peanut butter, which is the paralytic. And the next one is the man born blind. And then Palm Sunday, T-T-S-S-P-B-P. -P. We're all familiar with today's gospel or with the gospel of the fifth Sunday about the man who has been paralyzed for 38 years. The narrative of this gospel is very, very interesting because it says <clears throat> when Jesus saw him lying there, he knew that he already had been in that condition a long time. He said to him, do you want to be made well? Mind you, it doesn't say our Lord asked him, do you want to be made well? It said, he said to him, I looked it up in many translations, and I thought that was very interesting. It's almost like it wasn't really a question. It's like it was a rhetorical question. And now it kind of explains the man's response. Do you remember what he told him? He said, sir, I have no man to put me into the pool, and when the water stirred up, but while I'm coming, another steps down before me. He's almost giving a defense of why he's still lying there for 38 years. Why, isn't, why aren't things better yet? <clears throat> and this question, do you want to be made well, is directed actually to all of us. All of us have handicaps, if you will, that are in our life that we want to improve. All of us have certain aspects or facets of our life where we really hope to be made well. There's a lot of examples, maybe in my marriage, maybe a handicap in my relationship with my kids or one of my kids. Maybe there's a certain sin that I have a handicap in or sins that I'm just in bondage and I feel paralyzed, like I cannot move or, or get out of it. Maybe a handicap in like a personality flaw, something that I know in me, in my character that is, is just not right and I, and I hope for it to be gone, and I, I want to be, to be gone, but it's just not happening. Maybe some bad habits that I want to be freed from, maybe a virtue that I just can't seem to acquire. I keep trying, but I'm, I feel it's like I'm paralyzed, I can't reach it. Maybe a spiritual disciplines that I'm just at a stalemate in and I cannot improve. Or any life situation that I know needs to change, <clears throat> and I've known it needs to change for many, many years. but. I'm just as paralyzed as this man. Um, and, and the same question that our Lord directed to this man is directed to each one of us today. Do you want to be made well? I mean, do you really want to be made well? Um, believe it or not, many of us don't really want to be made well. A great example is the Gospel of the Fifth Saturday. We just read, with the, what, what you scribes and Pharisees hypocrites, they did not want to be made well. They liked the status quo. They wanted to stay where they were. And so they wouldn't listen to the Lord. There are several reasons why a person would actually not want to be made well, believe it or not. Some of us would rather sit and complain about how difficult life is. We prefer sympathy over success. Some of us prefer that instead of actually being made well. Some of us would rather look and judge and gossip about other people's handicaps in order to keep my mind and my eyes off of mine. So we're not even addressing our handicap. Some of us would rather the pain of being paralyzed over the pain of working to improve in order to be made well, because to be made well is gonna involve some work. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. Um, like this man, actually, our paralysis may be because of a certain sin. And we like the sin too much, so we'd rather the pain of being paralyzed over the pain of repenting. Because it is painful. It is, it is parting. It is a loss of something 
that I'm kind of attached to. That's what repenting is. Some of us, we don't even know that this can, that we can be made well, that this can actually happen. Um, as Hosea 4, 6 says, my people perished for lack of knowledge. Some of us, some people don't know that their current situation is not normal, that it is dysfunctional, that this is not right. They don't need to be staying in the situation that they're in. Their handicap is maybe their eyes, that they don't see the problem, so they don't know that something needs, can, needs to be better or something even can be better. They don't even know that they think, Allah, this is, this is life. So they don't even know that they need to be made well. Or some of us just have unrealistic expectations that actually paralyze us all the more and cause us to not start anything. Either we expect the, that the, to correct the situation, we need to achieve perfection right away, of course, which is not realistic. Um, so we're not going to even try to be made well. Or some of us, we expect that we will have to do this to like make it happen, to make ourselves well on our own, which is also wrong expectations. Um, one of the key keys, if you ever want to be made well, is to listen. To listen. We need to listen to the Word of God in the Bible. We need to listen to our Father Confession or our spiritual guide. We need to listen to the guidance of the Holy Spirit who is dwelling in us, who is always talking to us. Sometimes we ignore Him, sometimes we grieve Him, sometimes we uh, quench Him, but we need to be listening people. First of all, listening proves that you want to be made well. If you don't listen, that means you don't want to be made well. Listen to this. First John 4, 6, it says what? The one who knows God listens to us. The one who is not from God does not listen to us. This is a mark of a person who is starting to go astray, my friends, that he or she stops listening to the Bible or to the guidance of the Father Confession. Um, it's been a year or something that since they even went and seen their Father Confession. And even when their Father Confession wants to visit or to meet with them, they avoid this. They try to eliminate the situation which will require me to sit there and listen. Listening is the way to wisdom. Look at what uh, Solomon, the wisest ever, to, to tells us in Proverbs 23, 19. He says what? Listen, my son, and be wise, and direct your heart in the way. Listen and be wise. People who listen to guidance and instruction from the right sources, for some of us listen to the wrong sources, will for sure find their way to wisdom. Some of us really want wisdom, but we refuse to listen. I don't know how that's going to happen without listening. It's not going to happen. Um, you can also listen via reading, but with listening eyes, if you will. Also, listening is more honoring and delightful to God. It's something that God actually values so much that he values listening to him more than offerings and more than worship and more than praises. Like we say, praises is the highest form of worship, right? He actually prefers listening more than that. This is in 1 Samuel 5, 22. <clears throat> After King Saul and they won the battle and he started offering offerings and he's not a priest or anything. And so, long story short, like 1 Samuel at the end, this was the, the, the straw that brought the camels back when King Saul actually lost his favor with God and lost the kingdom and lost everything. Samuel is telling him this and us. He says, does the Lord have, this one of the, those rhetorical questions again. Does the Lord have as great a delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, and he's answering it too. To obey is better than sacrifice and to heed, to listen, is better than the fat of rams. Listening and obeying is more honoring and delightful to God and it's a true act of worship and servitude to God, um, much more than offerings and sacrifices and worship. And will win, listening will win God's favor and will like summon his graces and his help in my life, if I listen. Now, speaking of listening, if you want to be made well, you need to listen. Listening is not just hearing. 
Uh, it's hearing and obeying and doing. Listen to this. No pun intended. Listening is the act of the will of a person who wants to be made well. Say it again. Listening is the act of the will of a person who wants to be made well. Listening without first being silent is not listening. So now you say, okay, Abuna, now I want to listen. What do I do? Here's what you need to do. First, you need to be silent. Look at this. This is God talking to the people of Israel. And again, to all of us. In Deuteronomy 27, 9, he says, Be silent and listen, O Israel. In order to listen, in order for listening to achieve its objective and to bear its fruit, I will need to be silent. Silence is not easy, my brethren, especially nowadays, as you can imagine. You know, some people cannot stand the silence. They feel very uncomfortable, very anxious and agitated if there's if they're silence. When they get in the car, something's got to be making noise. When they get in the house, they got to turn on the TV and devices, even if they're not watching anything. They can't bear the silence. And this is a catastrophe. Why? You should recall this from the retreat from a couple of weeks ago, Isaiah thirty fifteen. It says, in returning and rest, you shall be saved. In silence and confidence shall be your strength. Why will you find rest and confidence and strength in your quietness and silence? Because when you're practicing quietness and silence, then you will be able to listen. And when you're able to listen, then you will be made well. So it needs to be in quietness and silence. Listening without working is also not listening. So listening without silence is not listening. Listening without working is not listening. This is the people of Israel talking to Moses and Aaron in Deuteronomy 5, 27. They said to them, you go near and listen to everything that the Lord our God says. Then speak to us everything that the Lord our God speaks to you. And we will listen and do it. Actually, that was redundant. Because if they said, and we will listen, automatically we'll understand what? That they're going to do it. What benefit is it with my, my friends if, if we come to church every Sunday, if we listen to sermons all the time, day after day, and yet we are determined to just hear them? It's maybe noise in the background, so we don't have silence. So we figured, okay, if I'm going to have noise, maybe it's good if it's just sermons or hymns or whatever. But we're not really determined to do what we are hearing. How will we be made well this way? Nothing is going to change. I'm actually, this might surprise you, I'm not a big fan of people who play sermons all day long when they're studying or when they're working or when they're doing stuff because I feel it loses something. And I, and I feel like maybe they'll catch something, but, but I would rather a person listens to one sermon a week and really like listen attentively, taking notes and planning on, I'm going to come out of this with some action plan, some action item that I'm going to be doing instead of listening to 20 sermons a week or something. Um, <clears throat> also, listening without doing is not listening. It is actually deception. So this is just a step up from listening is not working. Look at this. St. James tells us that in 122, he says, but prove yourselves and be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourself. <clears throat> People who hear only and do not do deceive themselves. How? Because they think we're okay. I mean, like, come on. They're listening to many sermons. They're like, I mean, that's good, right? Well, it's good only if you do what you hear. If you are just hearers and not doers, you deceive yourselves. Actually, we were just talking about that in a meeting last night. I think every time you walk into the doors of the church, you should walk praying, God, help me to listen. Give me the silence to where I detach from my whole world for these few hours and to just be attentive to you and to be listening to you. Listening to you in the words of the liturgy, listening to you in the Psalms that I pray in the Agbeya, listening to you in the absolution, listening to you in the prayers, listening to you in the sermon or the readings, listening to you and the good kind of listening that um, listening that is mingled with or active with or fruit-bearing listening that has to do with work and with doing. Um, 
So, in order to be listening, for listening to bear fruit, we need to be silent. We need to roll up our sleeves and work. We need to be actually doers and not deceive ourselves. Also, also, listening means that I receive it in my heart. That's the attitude I was just talking about. Listen to this in Ezekiel 3.10. God is talking to Ezekiel, to the people um, through Ezekiel. So this is to all of us. He says what? Son of man, or daughter of man, receive into your heart all my words that I speak to you and listen closely. Um... This might sound a little bit abstract, like what does it mean to receive it into your heart? It means simply this. It means that I receive the word with understanding, with acceptance, with joy, and I embrace it. I live by it. <clears throat> I approach the word of God with a pre-notion of acceptance. I approach the word of God with submission. I am coming to be told what to do, and I'm going to accept what needs to be done. And if I don't understand it, I'll ask. I'll ask my friends, I'll, I'll look it up online, I'll ask Abun, I'll ask somebody. But I'm approaching the Word of God with an open heart and an open mind. <coughs> Alas, this is a rarity thing this day. And we approach God or the Word of God with a magnifying lens and like a judging eye and like like a critical kind of attitude to where like I'm going to reject what I'm going to read unless if I'm truly convinced. That's the attitude we have and that's not a listening attitude with an open heart. And then the last point that in order for listening to bear fruit it needs to be accompanied with forgetting the past. In order to really listen I need to forget the past. There is a psalm that we um, here all the time in every crowning ceremony that we go to, Psalm 45, 10, it says, Listen, O daughter, consider and incline your ear. Listen. Forget your own people also in your father's house. If we want to be the bride of our heavenly bridegroom, in, in other words, if we want to be made well, we must detach and forget all the previous relationships that were detrimental to our spiritual life. Uh, to our spiritual state or hindering our spiritual growth to be made well, getting in our way of being made well. Um, sometimes in order to attach, you got to detach. Just like we tell them in the weddings, you need to leave in order to cleave um, to your bridegroom. Some marriages have a lot of problems because um, one spouse or both um, move in with their spouse and uh, with their husband or their wife or whatever, and they're still inclining their ear to their family and to their father's house and not to each other. So, my beloved, today's question is not just for the paralytic man by our Lord Jesus Christ. It's for each one of us. Do you really want to be made well? We all have many handicaps in our life. Ask yourself this. Why are things not happening? I mean, do I really want to be made well? If the answer is yes, Remember that we need to listen. Listen proves you that you want to be made well. Listening is the way of what to wisdom, and listening is more honoring and delightful to God than praise and worship. <clears throat> listening without first being silent is not listening. Listening without work is not listening, and listening without doing is not listening, but actually a deception. It's, it's almost better than not listening. <laughs> Um, because then I'm kind of lukewarm, maybe I think I'm okay, but I'm really not. Listening means that I receive it in my heart with open mind, with an attitude of acceptance even before it enters my ears. To receive the word with understanding, with acceptance, with joy, and I embrace it. And I live by it, or I try my best to live by it. And actually, when I live by it, I will be all the more convinced of the truth of the word. Uh, and lastly, in order to really listen, I need to forget the past and to detach from previous hindering relationships. May God help us all to practice the art of properly uh, listening, the listening, the good listening that bears fruit, so that we can all be made well. And glory be to our God forever and ever. Amen.